Well, we've been very excited about Chatter. You're going to be able to see that in very much in depth today. And there's another really critical part of our technology that we want to go in depth with you as well. And that, that key technology is something that we call Force.com. Everything that you've seen here today, every piece of technology, every demo, uh, every application that you're going to see is built with Force.com. It's how we build our own applications. Customers today are looking more and more at how do they build applications rapidly. They have a deep application backlog. They've been held back by old tools or old systems or old integration requirements. How can you build more, more, with more acuity, with, with greater efficiency in your own enterprises? That's what Force.com is really bringing us. So we've been really delighted to see the dramatic success of Force.com with our customers. And we've recently augmented the power of Force.com not only through the power of App Exchange and the thousand apps that are in the App Exchange, or with VMforce, which is our alliance with VMware to build Java as a service, but also our acquisition of Heroku, where we can also offer Ruby on Rails as a service. Our approach is to give you every language that you want as a service directly in Force.com. We, you know, we recognize that this kind of pre-cloud environment that I've been talking about today and the transition really has been a drag on the ability of IT to build and deliver new applications rapidly. And how do you get through that? How do you ins install and configure stacks? How do you write the code? How do you deploy and test? How do you monitor and tune? How do you do patch and regression tests? How do you deploy on mobile devices? How do you deploy for a social environment? IT has really got a lot of challenges today. And how can we get through those challenges quickly? That's why we've really put our very best minds on the development and deployment of Force.com, which IDC has said is five times faster, five times faster to build with than the traditional application development and deployment characteristics. That's very, very powerful. You know, 81% of Force.com customers say it's faster assembly and integration. 78% increase in coding and productivity. 60% in faster configuration, 76% faster deployment. It's all about speed. It's all about getting your employees and getting your users to this new environment. That is the power of Force.com. And built on Force.com, deeply integrated inside it is the database that you need to make that happen. That database, which is holding the data of our 100,000 customers and delivering that half a bill, half a Half a million transactions a day, the 500,000 applications, 500,000 transactions a day, the 36 billion transactions that we see every day, this is very, very exciting. Open for any language, trusted by 90,000 companies, Cloud2 database for social and mobile apps. You know, over and over what we see is this need for an open cloud platform. We don't want to dictate the language. We don't want to dictate the code. And we want to give you the ability to be portable. You don't like our database, you don't like our cloud, you can easily export your data, put it in another cloud. Take your logic, put it in another cloud. Take your system, put it in another cloud. And that openness is a critical part of building applications for today's environment. And whether you're using AppForce or SiteForce, VMForce or Heroku, you're going to find an increasing level of openness and transportability and portability of your code and your data with Salesforce and our Force.com development environment. With AppForce, it's the fastest way to build these departmental apps. All the tools that you need to build the applications, the form builders and the report writers, the social characteristics, the mobile development tools, everything is in one place. With SiteForce, everything you need to build an intranet site or a major website for your, for your, uh, for your customers to use is all in one place. The integrated content management system, the point-and-click editor, the website components, the content delivery network. And again, if you're a Java programmer and you want to build using our VMforce technology, you can deliver Java as a service with our Java runtime, integrated IDE into the Spring Framework, and the JPA that you need to deliver the Java code. And with our acquisition of Heroku, you're going to find why we have over 130,000 Ruby on Rails applications that are now written in our Heroku environment, and we are adding three to 4,000 new Ruby on Rails applications a week. Three to 4,000 new apps are appearing a week using Heroku. Running in the cloud, it's the number one cloud platform for Ruby on Rails. Amazing. And finally, if you're an ISV, 
whether you're one of the largest software companies in the world or one of the smallest, you're going to find great success using uh, Salesforce's services. In fact, uh, one of the really great uh, ISVs in the world, BMC, just rewrote their product called Remedy. And I don't know if you've heard of Remedy, but it's an IT help desk application. And they've rewritten it natively in Force.com, and they call it Remedy Force. And whether you're Remedy or you're CA, you're going to find the ability to build these next generation applications for sale to our ecosystem. So I'd like to take a look at this, and I'd like to turn, go ahead and turn over the demonstration on building a Force.com application. Gentlemen? Thanks very much, Pat. Very good. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm so ha glad to be here for the third demonstration of the morning. We're going to try to run through this pretty quickly. I'd like to thank DJ or for helping us out. So simply to show you the capacity of force.com. So what we did is in a few days, we created an application that's completely different from CRM. We took uh, a recruitment uh, management tool. So you know, companies need to recruit. And so Celine, she works for Cyrus, and she's working on this uh, recruitment process. So all she needs to do is select uh, the recruitment application from the list of applications, and then here she'll have access to the business objects she needs in order to work on this type of activity, in particular for jobs, uh, applicants, events, and so on and so forth. And there's actually an event going on right now. There's a re recruitment fair that's happening right now, and let's we'll see what we can do with that. So in addition, Celine's going to have her dashboard with all the information necessary. She'll have this in real time. So jobs per sector of activity, uh, the applicants pipelined, uh, vacant positions, and so on and so forth. So let's look at the type of jobs that are currently available. So all she needs to do is to click on uh, that business object. And here she has a list of information. And let's look at um, a sales rep um, position. So here, there's all sorts of management uh, information that needs to be managed. You know, it's structured information, uh, profiles, dates. And so how can we? How can we do this? You know, as Mark said, with um, Salesforce.com, we can uh, automate all this. And so, um, this is database.com is going to help you manage all the structured information you need. You can create tables. You can create relationships between the tables. You, anything, anything you would do with the relationship uh, database is now available on the cloud. So let's go back to the application. So here, we're going to ask Celine to create a new job. So there's a, a quick link on the left-hand side of the screen, and here you can create a, a job. So this is for research and development engineer. And so all sorts of elements are created. You can create any type of application with this type of uh, technology. So she's created the job, and the information's available on the cloud. So that means that it can be accessed via other environments. So let's go see what's happening elsewhere, you know, because this wants the, the object is to try to uh, publish this and to post it. So now we're going to go back to the corporate website. And here you have a career uh, section. So here on the career section, you click and then you have uh, uh, available jobs, including the job that has just been created because everything's available on the cloud. So here you have an applicant who's going to apply for the job. All he needs to do is click on the button and he can actually attach his CV. So he can upload a file. You know, you can have a PDF um, resume, and it can be uploaded. As I said, there's, you know, we have structured information, but we can also manage unstructured information, for example, files within the application. All right, so here we're online. And so this site was created under Java. So thanks to VM Force, you can deploy Java code over force.com, and you create any type of application with Java. So this is a, a corporate website, but let's go see what's happening on social networks. Hey, I have a buddy, you know, he has a great profile, and I know that his profile corresponds to that job that's just been created. So, you know, use the Java code to create the, the site, and so now you're going to go back to Facebook. And here on Facebook, you're going to be able to interact directly. Here's your company. Your company has a, a presence on social networks. It can publish uh, job postings. And here you have the R&D engineer. And so another candidate is going to be apply from uh, Facebook. He doesn't even need to go to your corporate website. He's on Facebook all day long. And so he can, from within Facebook, he can uh, apply for that job. And he can also upload his resume in this new environment. 
So how was this application created in uh, Facebook? Well, it was created thanks to Ruby on the Heroku platform. So thanks to Heroku, you can create Ruby applications and you can deploy them on this type of platform, notably Facebook. So we've created a new application. We used it in-house. We created a new uh, job posting. We've had applications on the corporate website. We have applications on Facebook. And I also mentioned the job fair. You know, job fairs right here. So what's happening at this job fair? Well, people are going to meet with uh, job applicants, and you know they're working with tablets. And on their tablet, they have an application that has access to all the information that's on the cloud. In particular, you can manage events. For example, there are three job fairs. One's taking place at the Knit. Let's go to that job fair. So here we're meeting uh, job applicants at the job fair. So these applicants have signed up, they have badges, and they've already uh, provided their CVs. Do you really want them to give you a paper CV like you did in the old days? Of course not. On the person's badge, um, you can take a picture of the QR code. And thanks to the QR code, you can identify the applicant and you can uh, retrieve his uh, resume from the cloud. So now you have his resume in real time, or rather her resume. And so you can work on it on your uh, tablet. You can put um, comments regarding the person's resume. And so all of this is a way of managing structured and unstructured information. There are different uh, communication channels um, for retrieving uh, the resumes. And now our managers need to work together in order to select the right applicant. And so now they're working on their iPads. So the manager just grabs his iPad and he goes to an application that will give him access to all the applicant's uh, information. And everything's available on the iPad. He has uh, the information, he can get the resume, and this is the resume from the person who applied on the website. He's also going to get the resume of the person who applied on Facebook. And he's also going to get the resume of the person who um, somebody met at the job fair. So rather than having to scribble on the paper version of uh, the resume, everybody's going to work on the same version of the resume. And they're going to use Chatter in order to collaborate and to make the right decision. You know, you could have an approval uh, workflow that could be launched uh, to bring uh, the HR directors into the, into the loop. But in any event, there's a collaborative effort that's made, and the decision is made to recruit Eliza, Eliza. And so this is done thanks to the chatter feed. And this chatter feed is also available via Sysmic. So Sysmic is an environment that enables you to uh, in integrate various um, feeds. So as you can see, our strategy for this platform is to make it available under all languages, Java, Ruby, all the others. We also want to interact with all platforms, Facebook, Amazon, Heroku. It also provides full mobility on all types of devices. And that is the power of this platform. You can develop all of your applications with it. Thank you for your attention. And now, back to Mark. Well, we're starting to head towards the end of our show, and before we end, I want to do two final things. And the first thing I'd like to introduce you to is a really great French CEO of a very hot new company that we've mentioned several times today, Luke Lamour. Luke, would you come up, up here? Please welcome him. Luke. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Many of you know Luke because he's also the founder of the Conference of the Web, and also he's the CEO of this great new company. So, Luke, tell us a little about uh, Seismic. Yes, thank you, Mark, for uh, having me. And you can talk in French, it's okay. Should I talk in French? Yes, of course. Okay, I'll, I'll that's going to be you. interesting. All right, More merci, or less. Marc. De... Thank you, Mark. Thank you for inviting me around the world with you. Seismic, in fact, in, is an application, is a central application from which you can manage uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and now Salesforce Chatter. So the corporate uses are obvious. First of all, you can hear what people are saying about your brand in real time on the social networks, and that's vital. Today, you need to know what people are saying about your brand at all times. And so I've always been, I, I've always wanted to know what's going on uh, and what are people saying about Seismic. Any 20 or 30 seconds, you know, people are talking about Seismic. And so I wanted to be able to chat about that in-house with my teams. And so six months ago, Mark and I had a conversation about uh, merging Chatter into Seismic. So either it could be uh, support 
you know, for example, somebody gives you feedback about your product or somebody criticizes your product or they call your attention to a bug, well, that means that you can pro treat it instantly in-house. And you can also generate a prospect. For example, we talked about the customer uh, support. And all this happens on mobile devices because, you know, this is 24-7, you know, on the weekend, on s Sunday. And so Seismic is now available on four uh, mobile devices, Android, iPhone, BlackBerry, Mac, PC, web, and social app yes. worldwide, uh, as I was telling you yesterday. Can we take a look at your phone and put it under the BioVision and show you, show everyone how you're using that? <laughs> I could, yes. Can we, <laughs> sure. can we bring up the BioVision? And another very important use is, of course, um, for prospects. Let's imagine you're a car manufacturer. And here, okay, we have Chatter on my Nexus Android phone. So this is my company. Uh, I'm probably the smallest company here. We only have 55 employees. In any event, uh, you know, we're based in San Francisco, we, in Europe. All right, so this is our booth that you'll be able to look at later. And we're also located in Asia. So this is Chatter, and here I have... I can manage my company here. And this, uh, the group is called Management. It's a private group. Only certain people uh, have access to it. And then there are other groups that are listed according to their geographical location. I have my entire company here. I can see what Cédric uh, Georgie is doing here. He's in the audience, and he's uh, the rep Europe director of Seismic. And what's even more interesting is that here I can transition from one social network to the other. So I can go from Chatter in my company, and I can move over to Facebook. So now I can see all my Facebook feeds, and I can manage my various Facebook pages. For example, a Seismix page. And finally, and this is the most interesting case, and I think you guys should all really follow this closely, here I can do a Twitter search, and I can see what's being said about my brand on Twitter. So on the Twitter search, you're going, to, it's going to pull up all any mentions made of your company and it's going to be filtered so this is live you know my connection is a bit slow and then it's going to be filtered as well that you, we've been showing on the Dell streak is that right yes we have it also on the on the Dell streak and um, and also so, on honeycomb yes and this is this is Dell's new 7 inch tablet which is very nice yeah i've not even seen it myself yeah. oh <laughs> yeah and then but a 10 inch yes, tablet works. you can really see the the, the power of the environment Yes, yeah. and it's, what's incredible is what uh, John was saying is that we've been able to uh, uh, we've been able to create thanks to the uh, Salesforce platform. We've been able to integrate Chatter into Windows Phone 7 yeah. in four weeks. Yeah, yeah. I want to show you how I've been using Chatter. You know that we've been on the road now. We've been going all over the world, and you know one of the things that's happened for me, and this is my uh, this is uh, my tablet that I've been carrying around. It's a new one. It's a it's an iPad 2 that I've been testing. Uh, for my own company, and I, I move between them. I've got my streak here. I've uh, also have one of those Dell phones. I've got an iPad. Um, you know, this is actually my feed, so you can see everything going on in my business. This is all of my employees are talking to me. Of course, I have employees in Japan. I can, you know, get information on, on that. I can find out more details on this employee uh, in Japan. We were just in Japan together, and uh, you probably remember Matsuda-san here. Yes, and of he. Course. He, you know, we can see everything going on in his feed. They've been extremely uh, busy, unfortunately. And they've been collaborating, not in the office. They've had to move home. Um, but everything going on in their Japanese operations are right here. And you can see that he's working on a series of customer service issues. And in regards to every one of these cases that he's resolving, he can just touch, we can touch that case and we can get an update on the case right out of our customer service and call center, find out everything that's going on uh, with that case it, and the it call center and the contact center. It completely eliminates distances. We also have one employee in Tokyo now since we, you have so many customers there, they also need help for Seismic there. And I could see what was happening from our employee, mm -hmm. uh, Nobuya-san, on, on Chair live. And you, it was amazing to see the entire company starting to ask him questions, which wouldn't have happened you know, outside. We wouldn't have done it on Twitter, right. but on Chatter, it was within the company. Yeah, that, that's, that's what we see in, happening in our own company. I mean, for me, in a few strokes of my hand, I can get an update on the whole company. Also, I was just in, in, in uh, uh, visiting with the, the CEO of Toyota, and so I put together this whole group to actually manage everything going on with that visit. So 
all of our you know, executives in Japan and in San Francisco and even those in Europe were all involved uh, in that visit and then I could actually see you know, all of the files, the documents. Here's even a, a photograph of me with him. And in fact, I was just in Germany working on something with BMW and here's this group of everything that we were doing and if you go through the group you can see you know, here's even the slides that I put together you know, for uh, the, the presentation and then you know, if I want to preview those slides, I can just open it up. That's cool. And I, I think that that's the power of this collaborative technology. It's not just my service applications like I saw or my sales technology. It's working together. It's getting everyone in the company working together. And I think what I love about Seismic is that it, it extends it to all these new devices. And, and that's, that's, you know, that's, that's where I think we're going. Where the future is going, I, I'm not sure. And, I mean, I've never seen the level of innovation and excitement. And where we're living in San Francisco, the new companies that are sprouting out, it's, it's just awesome. Cars are a great example because um, you have so many people talking about, I want to buy a new car. J'aimerais acheter ma prochaine voiture sur Twitter ou sur Facebook. And you can now answer. So if you're a salesperson, I'd like to buy my new car uh, through Twitter or Facebook. So if you're a sales rep, you can... You know, car manufacturers... Yeah, it's amazing. With. Let's see the car is going to be talking to me back into the social I, network. Yeah, I, I, I'd like that too. What's amazing is you let me, you let startups like me actually integrate completely, even compete somehow, right? And yeah. you give us the entire uh, Salesforce experience. That's our it's opportunity. Amazing. Well, we're delighted. Thank you, Luke, Thank for you being very much. here. You should try... Really uh, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. You should try Seismic and...